Hey, this is Johnny C, the video and camera guy. And today we're gonna to talk about the seven secrets of real estate photography. Now, secret number one, get a wide angle lens. We usually use a Canon 10 to 22 lens. You don't want it so wide that it's fisheye, but wide enough to capture the, all the room. Number two, clear the room and position things where needed. A lot of times photographers go in there and say, oh, I'm taking pictures of your house so you can help sell it. But are you moving things around with their permission, of course, or do you say to them, look, you can't have that towel and that dishwashing detergent up there. It doesn't look good. But I say it like this. I say, hey, would you mind if we move this and this and moved a couple things to make the shot look a little better, less cluttered? They always say, yeah. And so it makes for a much better shot. Don't go in there and take a picture of the back of the yard, the lawnmower is sitting there and some toys are around. Clean it up beforehand. Secret number three, putting some stuff in the foreground, sometimes adding more depth whether for your indoor or outdoor shot by adding something in the foreground is a secret that top photographers, especially real estate photographers, know really helps a lot. Maybe it's a little branch from a tree. A whole bunch of things can work. The next secret is angled shots. Don't just get straight shot on shots. Boom! Boring! You want to get things angled. High angles, low angles, but especially angles that bring out the depth, whether it be the corner of a table or corner of a building. You want to get those angles and not flat on shots. Remember, add depth. The next secret is long exposure. Of course, you're going to take your average exposures of a 1 125th of a second or 1 60th of a second for indoors if you're on a tripod, but trying some things with lower light and longer exposures can really make the difference. And I don't have time to go into it now, but longer exposures can really even out the lighting in ways, especially in low light, that you can never imagine. Try it sometime, quarter of a second, half a second. Longer exposures can really do the trick. Secrets number six and seven are time of day and HDR. Now I'll explain both of those. The time of day to shoot real estate photography inside, ideally, if you had to pick one time, it would be when the sun is just setting because you don't want all that sun shining through on the interior. There are times where you may want that, but to be safe, you don't want direct sunlight in there. Use some long exposures and then also wait. If your friend's selling a house and he invites you over for dinner, just wait and take pictures at different times as the sun is setting. Because you're going to find that ideal ratio between the light in the house and the light coming in from the windows. And what I would suggest to do this as a test is take a picture near a wall at a window and just keep taking it every 20 minutes or 15 minutes until that ratio between what's outside in light and what's inside is perfect. And you're going to want the outside obviously darker than the inside, but not too dark. And the last secret of the real estate photography pros is using HDR software. Now HDR stands for high dynamic range. What that means is it allows you to take a few shots on a tripod of different exposure levels and then blend them with the software later to match the outside light with the inside light. It's quite a fascinating process and a lot of people get into it. There's a whole bunch you can learn on the internet. Go to YouTube and type in HDF photography tutorial and you'll learn a lot about it. But it's a great asset to photographers that are doing real estate. My name's Johnny C, the camera and video guy and look forward to seeing you on another video.